Hey guys, Core Ross and Rainbow Six News. So today we're talking about cheating in Rainbow Six Siege and so far this year BattleEye has banned 47,000 accounts. Now before we go through this blog post, I'm going to just mention that Year 5 Season 2.1 is now out. This is the one that brings a Malusi nerf and a little tweak to Ace along with some bug fixes and also brings in match cancelization as well so you can actually cancel a ranked match if there's not full players to start with which is great. So anyway back to the anti-cheat blog. So we're going to be hitting all the major points in this but I recommend actually going and reading it yourself. There'll be a link in the description below. And this is kind of the same as the DDoS video I did. I'm not an expert in it. I just give over some information to help you guys digest it. And this is kind of the same thing. I will say that in that last video, I had a lot of complaints about their graphs. They just didn't do a good enough job kind of putting that information over. They have totally turned that around for this one. These are brilliantly done. And I think it gets over the information far, far better. So let's start with the approach the developers are taking to stopping cheating. So they've got three main pillars that they consider to be their anti-cheater kind of approaches. So the first one is to improve cheat detection. So of course that would be stuff like battle eye, but it also could be through the reporting system or even potentially looking like gameplay clips. And then the second pillar is increased barriers to prevent cheaters. So of course that can be a certain level you need to get into play ranked or having two-factor authentication on your account to play ranked, stuff like that. Then the third pillar is reduced cheat opportunity and impact. So this is kind of more towards maybe exploits, like getting to places you're not supposed to be, spawn camping, like, I'm, and I mean proper spawn camping, like actually getting into a position where you can literally see that person appear as they spawn so you can take them out instantly and also get into places you're not supposed to be able to do of course that is an exploit in the game which just hasn't been fixed yet and then they've got a good list of different types of cheaters or exploiters in the game and what they consider each one to be so they've got cheaters which is individuals using a third party application script or macro to obtain an unfair advantage in game or in a manner that violates the terms of service. They've also, of course, got the cheat developers, so the actual people making the cheats. These people actually sell them, so it's a very big industry and they make a lot of money. And then we've got hackers who will take over someone else's account. So there's actually websites out there, and you can find them relatively easily, where they simply have Uplay accounts and their passwords and logins next to them, and you can just go and log into those accounts. And it's because they don't have two-factor authentication on. And of course, they're probably using their password and login on another website for another service. They're not thinking of using a different you know, login somewhere else. So make sure you do have two-factor authentication on when it comes to your Uplay account. And those hackers will also resell those accounts as well. Of course, there might be accounts with some you know, unique cosmetics that might actually be worth quite a lot of money these days. Or people just literally log on to a hacked account and we'll just go and play cheats with it, you know, and might even just jump into casual and play with cheats because it's not their account, so they don't have to worry about getting banned. So you might one day log into your Uplay account and find out you've been banned for cheating, even though you didn't jump on and actually play, but it was someone else with your login details. Then moving over from that, we've got the exploiters. So people who use in-game design flaws that are handled on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, of course, this actually might involve everyone in the development team because, of course, map developers will have to get in and tune things because people will use exploits to get to places they're not supposed to be or to do spawn camping or do other stuff. So they have to come in and physically actually change the map in order to fix those exploits. Or it could be stuff like getting inside objects or maybe underneath the map or stuff like that where you can then potentially shoot someone without them being able to see you or shoot back and kill you. So those are kind of the different types of cheaters or exploiters out there. And then the next thing they give us is a timeline of anti-cheat measures for the game. So it's interesting to look back at this because when it launched in 2015, there was no battle eye. There was nothing for actually detecting cheaters it meant people could run their own code and they wouldn't get detected. So the only bans came from Fair Fight, which was just the reporting system. It wasn't until some point in 2016 that BattleEye was adopted. Now, one thing that would have helped Season that first year is it wasn't very popular. Like it basically launched and it flopped. So there probably wasn't a very big market when it came to paid cheats. And that's why the big cheating issue has really cropped up in the last few years because the game continues to grow and becomes a very profitable place for cheat creators. But after the adoption of BattleEye in 2016, the next notable thing is in late 2018 where they brought in 
two-step verification or two-factor verification, whatever you want to call it, for ranked play. And of course, that's PC only. Consoles don't need that as the cheaters are obviously a different breed on the console. Then in 2019, it starts to pick up. There's a dedicated anti-cheat strike team formed. And uh, this kind of goes with the, the whole kind of thing of this. They, they call this, like the title of this actual blog post is CG's anti-cheat war. And then we've got this strike team. It all sounds very powerful, but of course, it's kind of like the more you go after something, the more valuable that thing becomes. Because the more you try to hunt it down, the more the demand for it's actually going to go up. So yeah, it's uh, fancy little names, but dedicated anti-cheat strike team doesn't quite roll off the tongue so if you guys have a better idea let me know in the comments below but yes in march 2019 they brought in the mmr rollback and mmr reset this is so that uh, they're able to roll it back based on cheaters being banned that can be good or bad for you you can either lose mmr or gain it depending on how that all kind of shakes out when those those games that they were in basically get deleted from ranked then in September 2019, we have the DDoS and DOS measures because, of course, that became a massive issue all of a sudden as well. Then we move on to 2020 where they brought in a PVE XP cap to make it so it's harder to get up to the ranked level. They also brought in offline bans and I was told by the comment section that this is because the reason they're doing offline bans now is that people who are boosting would use, like, say, a compromised account. They'd have to boost other players up in rank. Then they would log off. Now, this would mean they wouldn't get banned until they logged back on. So because they were logged off, the other people who were getting boosted wouldn't feel the ramifications of it by the cheater being banned later. So now they do offline bans as well. They're also going after lobby freeze detection, which I have seen right basically since the start of this game. So good to get those people kicked out when they're doing that. Uh, improved links and automated battle eye reports. They brought in level 50 rank. So of course it was much lower before, now it's even higher to get into ranked. Now they've also increased champion rank requirements, which means you need to play a certain amount of games to actually become a champion. Even if you get to the MMR, you need to have played a certain amount of games to actually do it, which of course makes it harder to do for cheers. And they also extended the two-factor authentication you would need to get into ranked to different regions as well. I didn't actually know that it was limited to different regions. They've also done Steam VAC bans too, which means that those Steam accounts are basically banned not just for Rainbow but for every game they own which is pretty crazy. And then in the future they want to have increased and better detection, upgraded prevention and improved deterrence methods. And of course that's a lot of wasted resources that could be put into other stuff but they have to do it because people are out there being total asses. Now this is where they go on to excel with their graphs and some really good data that is really good and I think it's easy to understand and much better than our DDoS and graphs. So let's go through these ones. We've got battle eye bans by year. So they say this is only partial data. So presumably there's more here than what we're seeing. But total bans for year one was just under 20,000. Year two was just under 40,000. Year three was just under 50,000. And year four was just over 70,000. So that's pretty crazy and it's a growth. We can see obviously there as the player base continues to increase and the market for cheats continues to increase, the amount of people getting banned has gone up significantly. And then we've got battle eye bans in 2020. So this is a total of 47,898 accounts. Now of course that's probably easily a lot of people who are connected to potentially hundreds of accounts each by themselves. But we can see that in December, the numbers were pretty low, 5,000, then it steadily went up and it actually got all the way to 12,000 in April. And that was battle eye bans. So this is not like DDoS bans or stuff like that. This is people who are using cheats and there's a big increase in 2020, it looks like. Now, of course, we don't have the data to get a full understanding, but we can see that we're only halfway through the year here but we've already got 47,000 people banned. And in 2019, there was 70,000. So it looks like it will probably beat that number with 2020. So it's pretty crazy. And of course, I think that spike is probably due with the lockdown and a lot of people turning to cheats or even people actually jumping on to create cheats who normally wouldn't because they may have lost their job or stuff like that. So yeah, it's pretty amazing to look at these two graphs. And of course, one thing to talk about is 47,000 might not seem like much, 
when it comes to the entire player base of Siege. But you have to remember for both of these graphs, we are looking at PC players only being banned. So it is a significant amount of people. And of course, like I say, the we multiple accounts counted to one person, but still this is a lot of accounts that would be cheating on Siege if they weren't doing all this stuff. Then the developers move over to what they're actually going to be doing in the future to hopefully combat cheating. So they talk about improving cheat detection, finding cheats faster. They also want to be able to get early detection and flags for cheats and just a range of different things. So I recommend reading all this if you want to check it out. I'm not going to go over every single one because we'll be here all goddamn day. But they are, of course, trying their best. But they're also up against a bigger and bigger cheater base out there who are attempting to make a lot of money from all these cheats they're making so it is a fight that is going to be constantly going back and forth between the developers and the cheat creators pretty much forever there's never going to be a point where someone wins this war it just keeps going back and forward and eventually when siege does lose its relevance and moves on the player base will shrink and the cheat creators will then move on to other games to try and take advantage of those but even when this game eventually does shrink down to a smaller player base, there'll still be that niche market that will be there for cheat creators. There'll still be a few of them. So yeah, just never going to end. And that's kind of how they wrap it up at the end there. They say their efforts against cheaters will never relent. We'll continue to fortify our barriers and stack our defenses in the effort to do more to safeguard our players and player experience. We hope this blog was able to shed some light on our convictions against anti-cheat and our plans for the future. And I think they did a good job. This is a very good blog. They have totally stepped up in the graphs department. Really nice, whoever they got to do the artwork on that. Very, very well done. And uh, they end with the contributors of the Rainbow Six Siege anti-cheat strike team, the R6 Siege player behavior cell, and the R6 Siege community team. So they need some more fancier names, I think, there. They don't quite roll off the tongue. Come up with something better there, I think. But... Yeah, this is what the developers are trying to do to get this game as cheat-free as possible. Like I say, constant battle. It's never going to end. And it's interesting to see how it has ramped up over the years as the popularity of Siege has gone up. It'll be interesting to see how that continues if Siege stays as popular as it is or if it goes down or if it goes up or how other ways the cheaters might try and come up with different ways to kind of hack the game in some way. But yeah, like I say, there is multiple different ways to cheat in this game we've got the actual cheaters we've got the hackers we've got the exploiters and every single one of them all brings down the experience of the game like if you're getting to somewhere where you shouldn't be then report that on rainbow six fix so that that can get fixed because you know that is another way that makes the game worse because those are bad things of course hackers who actually try and take over other people's accounts get your account two-factor authenticated so at least that's harder to do and then of course the cheaters who are actually going out and buying cheats spending money on it and you know it's just going to make the game worse if you're giving people money for that and that's the thing the developers have put a lot of effort into this anti-cheat measures that could be going into actually making new content for the game if those resources were reallocated and i think as a player base we should understand that we are the issue here if we weren't actually going out and buying cheats and actually spending money on them those cheat developers would actually be moving on to other games that are more lucrative for them than actually making cheats for siege but we're buying them and that is the big issue i think so hopefully if you're watching this video maybe you're going to have a second thought about buying cheats and actually you know stop doing it but anyway guys thank you very much for watching i'll catch you next time